What's up, guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So some days um, you just wake up and there's a new release or something like that that you're super excited to make a video about. Um, today's one of those days. So I've been a giant fan of like the sci-fi generators, right? We've done a bunch with Random Flow. I want to do more with that in the future. Um, this is a different kind of add-on for Blender that basically helps you create displacement maps that you can use in order to create amazing sci-fi geometry. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So simple sci Sci-Fi is basically an add-on from Chip Walters, and what it does is it generates displacement maps and geometry for creation of sci-fi scenes like this one. So basically what it does is it takes a number of different presets and other things, puts them together, and then exports them into a displacement map that you can use in order to quickly create sci-fi scenes like this. So there's two different versions available. So there's a free and a pro version, right? So the free version is available on Chip Walters Gumroad page. I will link to that in the notes down below. You can download it and give it a try from there. In addition, there's also a paid version, which is $15 you can get from Blender Market. I will link to that in the notes down below. That comes with a lot more packs that you can use in order to generate more displacement maps. So we'll talk a little bit more about what those are, but basically those, uh, those are the different parts and pieces that kind of stack on top of each other in order to create the displacement maps that you need in order to um, create or generate these uh, 3D scenes. All right, so when you first open up Simple Sci-Fi, um, it's actually super interesting the way that it does this. What it's doing is it basically takes geometry nodes and it stacks a bunch of objects together. So it's using geometry nodes in order to take geometry. It's stacking them together and then you can render out the stack that's created as a displacement map. So what you do is you use this kind of like low poly geometry here um, in order to create the maps that you need in order to render this out. Then you export them and then you can import them into a Blender file. Um, in order to create those um, those really cool sci-fi scenes like you saw on Chip's website. So basically the way that it works is if you look on the right hand side, this is a geometry node setup. And what it's doing is it's taking a bunch of objects and stacking them together like this. So if we look at this, right, it's basically taking different rows of things and stacking them on top of each other. Well, then what's going to happen is we're going to render this out to a displacement map. It's going to give us that grayscale map that we need in order to create that displacement inside of a scene. So um, you can see how I can turn the backgrounds on and off, other things like that. But what it's doing is if you look at this, right, there's two different collections that get placed in here. And what it's doing is it's taking some shape collections and placing them in here. This is why that that pro version can be more important because it gives you more options. But basically, if you take these collections, and I think he's calling them D packs, so I think that probably stands for displacement packs, but basically what they are is they're collections of these different objects that you can drop in here. Notice how you can select um, any of these D packs that are in here. And so for example, if I look at a couple of these different D packs, right, if I select them, you can see how it's bringing in different piece of geometry or different pieces of geometry in here um, in order to create this stack. And so notice it's just stacking these together. And then when we export this, we're gonna be able to create that displacement map. And these are all fully editable, meaning I can come in here and I can adjust the size of these objects in here like this. So I can make them bigger or smaller, the way that they fit in here. I can also adjust the seed like this to adjust how random they are. You can also set this to have a black background or not. So the black background is obviously gonna give you more, um, it's gonna give you more contrast in your image. So, but then on top of that, what it does is it stacks a shapes collection on top of this. And notice how we can kind of adjust this right here. I'm actually going to go to a simpler D pack just so you can see this. So we'll just put the shapes gen in here. But notice how on top of this, there's shapes D packs in here that you can stack on here. Well, notice how what that's doing is that's taking these different shapes, right? And it's stacking them on top of your view. So it's basically stacking these together and then and so you can fully adjust the size, you can adjust the density, right? So you can have more or less, just like this. It's all built on the power of geometry nodes is basically what it's doing. You could also create like multiple rows of them. Notice how when you create rows, basically what it's doing is it's just stacking another row on top of this right here. So it's actually a really clever way to generate these maps. Um, the other thing to note about this is there are multiple different kinds of generators. So this one comes with three generators. Um, so if you click down, right, notice how there's a dots, a geo, and a shapes. So it kind of defaults to the shapes, but you can jump over to the dots as well. And I'm going to make 
these a little bit smaller just so you can kind of see what we're doing in here. I'm probably going to go ahead and set my collection right here to the dots collection, but notice how the dots collection is going to give you a different result than the geo generator, right? So the geo generator is going to do something a little bit different. So usually what you want to do is you want to go to the geo generator collection for this one, but that one is going to have more, it's going to have like a different kind of geometry in here, right? So more of like a 3D type shape. These almost look like a little like processors or something like that. Um, but those are all going to generate things that are slightly different and you can use this in order to really kind of customize what you're creating. And so notice how there's a cool thing about this, which these also have materials built into them. So the geo, for example, if I was to change this to material preview right here, notice how those geo objects have materials applied to them, right? So if you look at this, these already have those materials. And so whenever you change the seed or anything like that, it doesn't really matter because they already have those materials in here. So what you can do is you can use this to export not only a displacement map, but also a material map to go on your objects, right? Then another cool thing about this is you can also jump in here and if you find the material, you can actually adjust different things about the material. So for example, right now, notice how there's nothing really going on with the lights other than their color. But if you go find those lights in here, you can actually adjust the brightness of these lights so you can make them emissive. So you can put a value of one in here. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add lights to your rendered scene. All right, so now let's turn our material preview back off and let's just take this whole thing, let's export it. So all we wanna do is we just want to do a render image. All right, so then from here, what you can do is you can take this and export it as a map. And it's pretty simple because all you really have to do is just uh, do a render and you can just do it in Eevee, but you just wanna render an image like this, what it's going to do is it's going to render this out as a map, which you can then export and then bring into a Blender file as a displacement map. So um, what we can do is we can just do a save as once we've rendered this. And so chip notes to save this file as an open EXR file. What that's going to do is that's going to save this as an EXR, which has a lot of uh, information in it. I think it saves it as a 32-bit file, which you can then bring into Blender and use with a displacement material. So for example, let's say I wanted to take this and let's say that I wanted to bring that into a new file. So I could just do a file new. We're gonna go ahead and not save this right here, but then I'm just going to add a plane, scale it up, go ahead and apply our rotation and scale, but I'm just gonna add a new material and we're just gonna set it up as the displacement map. And I can link to a video where we talk a little bit more about how to set this up, but basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna add a displacement node. So displace, your displacement is going to go right here. Then you want to drag that file that was generated into this folder. So if we look at this, I want my test one EXR. I want to drag that right here. And then I can take the color from the EXR, drag it into the height right here. So one thing we want to do with this, and actually the first thing I want to do is I want to adjust the UV mapping um, so that this isn't tech, this isn't tiling so much. So I'm just going to take this whole thing and I'm actually going to make it bigger on my screen like this. But then we'll go back into our shader editor. All right, so a couple more things we need to do. First thing, we need to switch to cycles in our render engine, right? Because cycles is the one that supports displacement. You wanna go ahead and set your feature set to experimental. Uh, we'll have a reason for that in a minute. We wanna set our device to GPU if you have a strong GPU like I do. But then the other thing we need to do is within the material settings, we need to under um, our settings, and this will only show up if you have your render engine set to cycles, but you wanna set your displacement to displacement only. Right, so now this is set up for displacement. You should be good to go. So if you switch over though to your um, rendered view like this, nothing is really happening. The reason nothing is happening is because the displacement map is trying to apply the data um, for the displacement to this surface, but there's no geometric data in here, right? If I tab into edit mode, this is just a plane. So usually what I start with is I tab into edit mode, right click and I'll subdivide this and I'll subdivide the surface maybe 10 times subdivide it and maybe subdivide it another 10 times. You gotta be a little bit careful with this because you start creating a lot of geometry and this really slows down. But 
what we've done is we've taken this and we've added geometric details. So now the displacement map can come in here and displace our geometry. So if we jump back into cycles again, notice how now that subdivided geometry is displacing a little bit in your 3D space, right? You are getting some ups and downs in here, but not there's not enough information for us to get the full result that we want. And so we need to get a little more geometric detail in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our mesh, we're gonna go to our modifiers, and we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier to this geometry. Okay, and so this is a little bit better, but we still need some more detail. So I'm gonna switch this over to simple subdivision, but then I wanna check the box for adaptive subdivision. That's gonna give me more geometric detail um, in the subdivision of my model. All right, and so with the adaptive subdivision on, you can see how this is going to be a lot smoother, and it'll be even smoother still when you actually render this out, right? It keeps the levels kind of low inside of your viewport in order to make things look good. So one other thing you may want to make sure that you do is you toggle on denoising in your viewport. But notice how this is going to look even more detailed later on. And uh, Chip's gotten some really great results with this. This is something I'm still playing around with a little bit. Um, but just note that you are going to get even more detail when you click that finer, final render button. All right, so more to come on this one. I still need to figure out how to get the materials set up when you're actually using the displacement. But overall, this is a great tool. You should at least go download the free version. So you got nothing to lose by doing that. I will link to that in the notes down below. If you're looking for more packs for setting up those different layers for your displacement maps, you can get those in the paid version, um, which is $15 right now on Blender Market. As packs are added, I believe that's going to go up. So if you are interested in that, make sure you go get that right now. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. If you've tried it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.